Hi there, this is Rob Hanna. Today I'm going to discuss the overnight edge's seasonal odds. I'll show how utilizing them to initiate overnight positions would have worked out historically, and at the end I'll discuss how you can get this information for free on a nightly basis. Before I can get to that though, I need to give you a brief moment to read the following disclaimer. Much of what I'll be presenting is based on back-tested historical data. While I use this data as a large factor in my decision making, there's no assurance that any back tests you do will produce comparable results in the future. Okay, let's move on. So here's a shot at the Overnight Edges odds sheet as run on July 6, 2012. It's a little scrunched up so it could fit on this PowerPoint slide. Uh, I've also blurred out most of the numbers so that I can more easily draw your attention to the seasonality odds, which are the ones I'll be talking about today. Specifically, I'll be talking about ES, which is my preferred vehicle, uh, along with SPY. Uh, the column I'm focusing on is the percent profitable column. What that column is telling us is how often ES has gapped up the following day based on the overnight edges seasonal formula. On this day, the value in the percent profitable column was 49.81%, basically break even. This suggested no substantial seasonal tendency for either a gap up or a gap down. What I want to examine today is how a strategy might perform that was based entirely on this number and took no other information into account. What I'm showing here is a trade station optimization report. It's looking at taking the number I highlighted on the odd sheet and simply using that to determine whether to take a long position overnight in the ES. The far left column shows the required number that would need to appear on the odd sheet for a trade to take place. It then calculates how the account would have performed if it went long 10 ES contracts at the 415 close and then sold those contracts at the 9.30 a.m. open the following trading day. It also assumes a commission rate of $2.36 per contract. While I have found that stops and targets can be utilized to help manage risk and potentially improve performance, they were not used in running this test. The first thing to note is that the statistics generally improved when higher odds were required. This suggests the approach used to determine those odds were in fact effective over the seven and a half year period. The three columns with green arrows demonstrate this concept best. As you can see, the winning percentage, average trade, and profit factor all rose steadily by requiring higher seasonal odds. For those not familiar, profit factor is a simple ratio of gross gains versus gross losses. I only show a seasonal odds requirement as low as 35% on this report because there were no instances where the calculated seasonal odds percent came in lower than 35%. Results for 30, 25, or 20 would be exactly the same. The 35% measure basically means you went long at the close every single day. Of course, we know there's been an upside tendency for the market over the years, so it may be surprising to some to see the net number here is actually negative. That's thanks to commission. Without including commission, the number here would have been positive. The two seasonal odds percentages here that I've highlighted are 55% and 65%. 55% shows the greatest amount of total profit, while 65% still grabbed a big chunk of profits, but did so with substantially fewer trades, winning on over two-thirds of those trades, and putting up generally nice stats in all columns. So let's now look in more detail at what returns would have looked like using 35%, 55%, and 65% as our filters. This shows the profit curve using 35% as the filter. As I noted, 35% doesn't filter out anything, so you're effectively looking at performance assuming you went long and paid commissions every night at the close, and then exited the position at the next day's open. There are some good and bad periods here, with 2008 obviously being the worst. It, it doesn't appear to be a profit curve that anyone would find attractive. Now let's look at using a 55% filter and see how that works out. By requiring seasonal odds of at least 55%, you filter out nearly three quarters of all days. The consistency of this profit curve I found to be fairly astounding when I first ran it. While it has chopped around some, it's generally remained on the same upslope since 2005-2006. It has shown year after year of steady gains. In the box on the lower right hand corner, I break out the returns by calendar year. The worst year was 2010, in which this approach would have only gained around $10,000.
The best year was 2007, in which over $45,000 in gains would have been realized. 2005 and 2006 show significantly more instances than in the years 2008 through 2011. Still, even in years with a reduced number of trading opportunities, you would still get an average of about four per month. So far in 2012, we're seeing more trading opportunities than in any year since 2006. But what if you want to filter even more strictly, requiring published odds of 65% or more? How might returns have looked under these circumstances? Well, we already know from the stats table I showed earlier that using a 65% filter is going to produce a higher winning percentage and a stronger average gain. It's interesting to see how this would have taken shape, though. Most notable to me are the voids, both on the chart and in the annual returns table that can be seen in 2005 and 2008. There was no trades in either of those years. Remember, the overnight edges odds sheets are all adaptive. During those years, there was no situation in which the market could have produced an odds percentage of 65% or greater. Both were strong years using the 55% filter, but requiring a 65% probability would have eliminated all opportunities during those times. During the other years, you would have seen generally between one and two and a half trading opportunities per month. One approach that traders could consider during years like 2005 and 2008 would be to temporarily lower their criteria to a level that would generate some trading opportunities. Perhaps this might be 55% or 60%. As the odds sheets are updated, I can alert traders if we are entering one of those periods where a very high percent profitable number is not possible. Hopefully I've been able to adequately demonstrate the value of incorporating overnight edges seasonal odds into your decision making. Overnight edges seasonal odds are just a fraction of the information that subscribers are provided as we approach the close each day. But even if you aren't ready to subscribe, you can still benefit from the Overnight Edges seasonal research. Simply sign up for our email list and indicate you'd like to receive the ES seasonal odds on a daily basis. Free subscribers do get them on a brief delay. While paid subscribers get them before the bell, they go out 45 minutes after the futures market closes to all free subscribers. Still, there's some nice potential to benefit from this information, and at the very least you can track how the overnight odds are stacking up moving forward. If you have any questions, you may contact me using the contact form on the Overnight Edges website. Thanks for listening and good trading. Bye-bye.